saying that Christian meditation is not like meditation like this. There's this transcendental meditation. There's Buddhist meditation. There's Hindu meditation. And, and we're, you know, we're not into that kind of stuff. We're into uh, drawing closer to Jesus and uh, understanding the scriptures in a much greater depth and uh, allowing time for Jesus or the Father to speak onto our spirit or speak into our heart and, and, and share something with us. So that's what we were talking about. We introduced it last week. I'm going to do a little, real quick review here because um, I don't want to go too far ahead with so many people away. But we started off last week in Luke chapter 5, verse 16. And remember, it was telling us that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Now, he often pulled himself away from all of the hustle and the bustle and the crowds and all the disciples asking questions. And, he, and frequently, often, in, in this particular translation, he pulled himself away and went off quiet where there's a quiet place. Some translations say wilderness. Withdrew to wilderness places. Um, that doesn't work if you live in New York City or Los Angeles. You know what I mean? But, you know, in other words, some place that's quiet, that you are alone. All of the voices of the world are shut out. The TV isn't blaring. The neighbors aren't, aren't banging on the walls, you know, next door. All that kind of thing. Somewhere where you can just spend some real quiet time alone with God. And so we looked at that in some detail. We also looked at three Psalms, chapter 19, chapter 49, and chapter 104. And we saw that those Psalms tied meditation in with the heart. Studying and reading intellectually the Bible, you know, it's, that's a mental activity as well as a heart activity, but meditation, it talked about the heart. The meditation of the heart. <clears throat> Let me add a, a little dimension to this that I didn't mention last week. Do you know the name Rick Warren? He pastors Saddleback Church in California. Uh, you may or may not know that name. He wrote, he's written a number of books, uh, The Purpose Driven Church, The Purpose Driven Life. Those may, that uh, may ring a bell. He made a comment one time that I, I've always remembered. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Because they're almost identical, except worry is negative. Worry is thinking, wow, this is going to be a disaster. It's all going to fall apart. Where's God? Why doesn't God help us out? You know, worry is, is meditation in the negative. Uh, you're, you're reliving the same thing over and over and over, mentally and emotionally. Well, what we're talking about is communing with Jesus positively and, and rethinking some of these things over and over and over again, but not worrying about them, but, but understanding them, thinking upon them, praying upon them. <clears throat> so we call it meditation rather than worry. So we saw then in those three Psalms, uh, it ties it in with the heart. And we're, next week, when we have the final sermon, I'll, I'll introduce you to several more scriptures that tie in with meditation. But uh, I, I don't want to go there today. And remember, we ended last week by talking about surface consciousness and deep consciousness. Surface consciousness, of course, uh, vital. It's part of life where you know it's 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 not deep thinking you ask yourself what am i going to have for breakfast this morning that's not really profound stuff uh, those kinds of things uh, it's a part of our our daily life uh, and there's nothing wrong with it and then there's deep consciousness which is what we would call christian meditation what other people would call deep and profound study and, and discussion and debate that kind of thing. Um, some people call this stuff, stuff, these concepts. <laughs> some people call these concepts mindlessness and mindfulness. And I don't like those terms. 
and I, I think it's that's a bit of a misnomer. Mindlessness. Hey, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Some people would call that mindless. Mindless consciousness. Um, you know, every, every day, <coughs> Priscilla comes over to my apartment. We jump in the work truck. And every day we're going a different direction. So sometimes we jump in the work truck and I start off and we drive about two blocks and then I think, wait a minute, where are we going? And Priscilla would say, Buffalo Shore South. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. And, and off we go. All right, now that's, uh, that's almost mindless, okay? Uh, it's more forgetfulness, but, it, but every day we're going a different direction. So some days I get my days mixed up and I can't remember whose house we're gonna go wash today. We don't want that in a lot of areas of life, do we? For instance, if you're going to go flying from here to some place on an airline, you want to fly with a pilot that's got some, some pretty deep thinking, do we not? You know, uh, uh, Captain Scully, when his engines quit right after he took off in, in New York, he knew what to do. He, you know, he probably thought about it 10,000 times before. If we take off here and something happens, we don't have much choice. We're in a big metropolitan area. He probably had thought that out a thousand times before he ran into all those Canadian geese. He knew what to do. You don't want to fly with a pilot that says, hey, how you, you know, when it takes off and turns to his co-pilot at 30,000 feet, where was it we were going to today? Where were we, are we flying to LA or, or to uh, Puerto Rico? I can't remember. No, no, we don't want that. We don't want to go into the hospital <clears throat> for major surgery. And they cut open your chest and they spread your ribs. And there's your heart. And then the surgeon says, now, what was it we were going to do today? And the nurse says, I think it was brain surgery. <laughs> no. We would never want that, right? <clears throat> so why do we settle for that? when it comes to our walk with God. Why are there so many Christians in North America that are scared to death someone will ask them a Bible question? Well, we know the answer, don't we? It's because a lot of them don't ever read their Bible. A lot of them are what we called last week ankle-deep Christians. They stand ankle-deep in the Pacific Ocean for two months and then complain that they've never seen a whale Maybe there's no whales in the ocean. And of course, you know, we know differently, right? <clears throat> there are thousands and thousands of species of living creatures in the ocean. And if you only stand ankle deep, six feet into the, from the shore, ankle deep in the Pacific Ocean, <clears throat> you're not going to know much about it. You can't speak on it with any authority. And so it is with some Christians. Hopefully nobody at Faith Church, right? But there are some Christians out there like that. So that's why we're talking about this subject. We want to go deep. We want to go deep. So let's have a look at it. Today I'm going to talk about listening prayer and uh, how, to, you know, how, to, how to actually go about doing that. Uh, next week we'll talk about meditation in a different way, which I think probably more of you can relate to. It's a step-by-step -step procedure where, you know, it, it involves reading the scriptures, praying, and then listening for more revelation on those same scriptures. And I think that probably will you know, it'll relate to it better, but we'll get to that next week. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to talk about briefly today. Jesus, as we saw it, uh, uh, <coughs> often withdrew to uh, lonely places. So how often would I suggest that you and I try this deeper meditation or deeper time of communion with Jesus? Well, my recommendation is, you know, we should probably try this since the vast majority, if not all of you, are retired. We should try this two or three times a week. All right, now that's my, that's my suggestion. You just go with what you think we should do. Now I'm talking about something that's in addition to your regular prayer. You understand? In addition to the, you pray every day, um, try it. 
this deep, deeper communion twice or three times a week. And, and give it time, will you? If you've never done this before, and you're going to sit quietly and, and just listen for God to put something on your heart, something on your spirit, um, don't try it once and found out you, fall, you fell asleep, and then so therefore, you, if this doesn't work for me, I'm not gonna do it anymore. No, please don't do that. Uh, my suggestion is you try some of this stuff for several months to see if you can uh, work your way into it in a, in a deeper and more profound way. Give it a good chance, all right? So that would be my suggestion to you. Withdrew. Uh, time and location away from the, the daily routine. Hey, when, I, when I normally pray, I pray at the foot of my bed. I kneel down, rest my elbows at the end of the bed. Now, that, this is regular, everyday prayer. And then throughout the day while I'm doing things, while I'm driving, while I'm uh, washing windows, too, because, I mean, I, you know, uh, you, you got to think a tiny bit when you're, when you're squeegeeing the glass, but it, basically it's a surface activity. Service consciousness. <laughs> so I've got plenty of time to pray while I'm squeegeeing windows as well. But when I do this deeper communion, listening prayer, I go to a different location so that, that everything, my, my head, my heart, my spirit, are all geared for a different activity, a different time frame. I go in the spare bedroom and I have two different things there. I've got a table and a hard wooden chair. And that works better for me than the rocking chair that's in there as well. Because it's very soft. And if I sit down in there and I close my eyes and I put in earplugs, um, I, I, sometimes I just don't stay awake. And that, you know, that's not, that's not very good meditation with God. Fall asleep in his presence. But um, that's what I do. And I would strongly suggest that you have a very special place that you would set up specifically for this kind of communion with Jesus. Different from your regular everyday prayer. You know, depending on how, your regular everyday prayer it depends on your schedule. And sometimes it may be only five minutes. Sometimes it may be much longer than that. I don't know. You know, you, only you, you and God know how long you pray. Um, but this is something different. This is something special. So I would recommend that you set up a special place so that y your whole being is geared to what you're going to be doing. In this location, this is all that I do, you know? Um, and so, so that place and that chair is specifically for that purpose. And that helps you prepare uh, in that way. I said I wear earplugs. The reason I wear earplugs is uh, if you're going to be really listening for the voice of God, you need to shut out all the other voices. And when, like when I go hiking down at Lake Uchi State Park, when I'm out in, 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 the, in the wilderness, so to speak, the, the birds chirping in the trees do not upset me at all. Uh, I find I can sit down under a tree way back in one of those little valleys somewhere and, and just have a very good time of communion with God. But here in Grove, in my neighborhood, there's as many dogs as there are people. And, and I, I just, I don't, it, the, the sound of dogs competing with one another in their barking uh, scenarios, uh, somehow it just throws me off. I, you know, I just don't like it. So I have these little, you know, these little squishy foam earplugs that I use. And it really helps. I mean, it shuts out almost everything. Um, I could probably still hear a car crash outside, but, but other than that, it's, it's silent. And, uh, you know, and I sit in the hard wooden chair with my elbows resting on the table, and sometimes I'll, I'll rest my chin in my hands, etc., cetera, um, and just, just spend a good long time. I'll probably start off by praying, and uh, explaining that, you know, I, I really want you to lay something on my heart today. I want you to show me something maybe I need to change or uh, show me something you'd like to see me do in the future. 
you know, all these different kind of possibilities, and, uh, and then spend a good long period of time with my eyes closed, my earplugs in, and just thinking about God or thinking about Jesus, and, and uh, see what happens, see what comes about. Um, <coughs> again, you may want in this special location, you may want a, a number of things. Like I said, I have a Bible there. Some people uh, might want to have a cross. I don't know. Some of you might want to light a candle. Uh, you know, don't poo-poo some of that. Uh, like some people say, oh, that's just silly emotionalism, lighting a candle. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be in love with Jesus. Jesus is in love with us. We are his bride. You know, uh, when you're in love, you do things that sometimes are emotional or silly. You go down and you spend good money on a single-stemmed rose that's going to die in four days, but you do it, right, because you're in love. Uh, that kind of thing. And so, or you, buy, or you buy your wife a box of chocolates and then say, don't eat those, they get way too many calories. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Lighting a candle and having that flame there if you're sitting in a darker room. Uh, it's, like, it's like Jesus is the light of the world. And for some people, that may be a help. You know what I mean? Um, having a cross there to look at. Uh, having your Bible so you can open it and, and, and read a few scriptures. Whatever works for you. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's like getting together with Jesus and, and sitting and having a good long conversation where you're going to spend a good part of the time listening, not talking. Some of our daily prayer, especially if we're busy and we've, we've got to get going, we've got, we've got errands to run, sometimes it's a very one-sided, you know, uh, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, oh, amen, and you're up and you're off and you're out the door with all of the things you've got to do. This kind of an activity, we're saying we need to spend some good, solid time <coughs> just waiting. Be still and wait on the Lord. Be still and wait on the Lord. So, uh, you know, fix up that special area the way you want it for this special kind of an activity. And there's some things we should do, especially at our age. If you're going to spend, let's say, a good period of time, I don't know what, you decide, say a good 30 minutes, uh, make sure you're not hungry. <laughs> okay. Make sure you're not hungry before you start. Just before you start, go to the bathroom, you know, so you can stay there the whole time, no matter what, and just listen for the voice of God. Go to the bathroom. Settle yourself, you know, again, if this place... Uh, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you do this at 2 o'clock or something. Okay, so you know on Tuesdays and Thursdays, your, your whole mind and heart are geared for this. And you go in there and you're ready. You're mentally prepared. You're emotionally prepared. It's, it's something that is a part of your life. Uh, so settle yourself. Think positively. Start with prayer and perhaps a little bit of Bible reading, you know, again, uh, or, or holding that cross that you've got there and, and, and thanking Jesus for his redeeming work again. Um, maybe, maybe even have a hymn book. You know, if you, if you, if you really like a favorite hymn, uh, a little five minutes of worship before you enter into this, that would be a good thing too. Again, everybody does this a little bit differently. Um, you know, it's, 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 I, I can't, I can't give you absolutes in, in some of these things. Uh, and, and of course, invite God to speak to you. Invite God to place something on your spirit, on your heart. Uh, listen with infinite patience. Don't sit there for five minutes with your eyes closed and nothing's happened. So obviously God's gone on vacation and you quit. Now, if you're going to go in there for 30 minutes and just still yourself before the Lord, you're kind of like Mary. You know, we've talked about her a lot. Like Mary coming and sitting at the feet of Jesus. Let's just, you know, just sit there for a full 30 minutes 
and think about Jesus and, and give him the opportunity to inspire us in some way. Inspire us in some way. So, and again, I urge you not only to, to try a good 30 minutes, but also try it for, for a number of months, okay? Don't just try it once or twice and say, this is stupid. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather just read the Bible and watch TV. No, no, don't do that. Don't be ankle deep. Take the time to become very deep, to, to uh, you know, uh, get deep into the scriptures, get deep into prayer, get deep into meditation, and, uh, and, and become a, um, an expert, really, you know, uh, uh, become profoundly deep with Jesus. Notice Matthew 11 there, Matthew 11. Jesus is explaining about uh, John the Baptist and who he is and what he was doing. If you are willing to accept what I say, now there's an interesting statement. If you're willing to accept what I say, remember we talked about President Roosevelt last week, remember that? He wanted to find out if anybody listens to what he said. So everybody who came up to him at the, the gathering at the White House, he would say, I murdered my grandmother this morning. And he found out there's a whole bunch of people that just don't listen. They're thinking about what they're going to say when they walk up to the President of the United States. They don't want to say something stupid. So they're, they're, they're rehearsing it in their head as they walk up to him. And then he says, I murdered my grandmother this morning and they don't even hear it. Keep up the good work, Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's to say, you, you've experienced this in conversations, you know, anywhere, Walmart, coffee shop, whatever. You're talking. Your friend isn't listening to you. All they're thinking about is what they are going to say next. They're just waiting for you to shut up. They are not listening. The scribes, the Pharisees, and the priests were probably in the temple reviewing the prophecies of the Messiah coming to Israel and, and, and saving Israel. And they were hoping that it would save Israel from the Romans. And while they're, they're thinking about that and talking about that, the Messiah is actually outside riding into town on a colt, a donkey. And people are throwing things and, and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They talked to him face to face and didn't even <coughs> recognize who he was. So he says here to them, if you are willing to accept what I say. See, part of spending 30 minutes, even though it, it may feel like nothing is happening, maybe something's happening. Maybe he's speaking into your spirit and, and you and I don't even see it recognize it at that moment but maybe later on tomorrow the next day next week next month we've got a perspective that we didn't have before and we're not sure where it came from see what i'm saying if jesus can be right in front of the religious leaders of israel and they don't even see him or hear him or recognize him you and i can pray or meditate and maybe we feel nothing is happening and yet he's right there in the room with us. He's right there in the room with us putting principles, values, opinions into our heart, into our spirit, and we're not even recognizing it at the time. If you are willing to accept what I say, he, John the Baptist, is the Elijah, the one the prophet said would come. You know, Elijah would come and, and make straight the paths before the Lord, the Messiah, showed up. So this is what John the Baptist is doing. If you're willing to accept that, what I say, this is prophecy being fulfilled right in front of your eyes. That's what he was telling them. So anyone who has ears to hear should listen and understand. But they didn't. <laughs> 
They did it. I mean, they were, they, they even talked to him face to face on some occasions and didn't recognize him as the Messiah. He, he resurrected people from the dead. He healed lepers. And the lepers came to them and said, look what Jesus did for me. And they still didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. So we need to practice a deeper communion with Jesus in many different forms so that we will have ears to hear and that we will listen and that we will understand. So give this a try. And, and give it a good, fair try. Several months and, and uh, you know, set that time aside and just trust that Jesus is going to speak into your spirit. He's going to speak into your head, your mind, and into your heart. And, and you're, you're giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to create a new mind and a new heart inside you because you are sitting at the feet of Jesus for a full 30 minutes. The average American Christian can sit in front of the TV and listen to the devil seven, eight, nine hours a day. Why can't we sit in front of Jesus for 30 minutes? We can. We should. We must. Let's have another...